Hello, welcome to the Texas Private School Podcast. I'm Walker Lott, one of your hosts. We have a great show for you today. I just want to give a big thank you to all of y'all for your patience. You know, we wanted to provide something that was special, which takes time, of course, and then you throw in a Texas-sized blizzard and you got yourselves a delay. But it's for sure worth the wait. To start us off, the first annual Texas Private School Podcast Award Show sponsored by Family Toyota, became a reality because they are truly supportive of private school sports. I've known the family behind Family Toyota for years, and it's my pleasure to talk about them. Everyone needs a car at some point, and when you do, you need to call Family Toyota. They're experts in their field, and they're family owned and operated, and they're also pet friendly too, but most importantly, they treat you like family. I think you'd want to develop a relationship with your car dealer, So you don't have to go shop around every time, buy, trade, and service a car. I mean, isn't that what you'd want? Sure it is. And that is this place. Here's some extra info. Family Toyota has two convenient locations in Arlington and Burleson. They have over 800 new and used vehicles to choose from, from practical to luxurious with amenities, all the amenities you can think of, and a complimentary car wash when servicing your vehicle as well. They were awarded the Dealer Raiders Consumer Satisfaction Award and a Car Guru's Top Rated Dealer in 2020. You get more for your trade at Family Toyota and get paid in cash. Plus, every pre-owned vehicle is certified with 120 point inspection, have a three day money back guarantee and a two month, 2000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. Of course, see disclaimer for details. They offer an honest and straightforward approach for purchasing and or servicing your vehicle. You can count on them to offer competitive pricing and they guarantee their lowest price. I encourage you to look them up. They're the real deal for sure. Now, without further ado, I want to show you the Texas Private School Podcast Award for our exceptional athletes. As you see here. The Family Toyota sponsorship allowed us to give a unique, high-quality award that is iconic to the podcast, and that is our, that our recipients can display either at home or at their future college. This one obviously is a thank you to Family Toyota, but each award looks just like this, except with different athletes and award information, of course. As you see, uh, the key design element we looked for was Texas. Athletes, no matter where you go when you leave high school, you'll have a piece of your grand state with you. We've chosen a royal blue background because we think it looks really good and it's one of our colors on the podcast, and you can hang it without the backing the be see-through as well. But we're also including your high school color in case you prefer that option as well. I want to shout out also uh, 313 Design and Metal Work based in Fort Worth. I'll have their IG down below. They did a great job in these uh, awards. Um, the craftsmanship was amazing and we are thrilled with the design and we look forward to many years of getting this iconic award. Um, we want to thank you guys, the followers who share our message and our excitement for private school football and sports as well. We are able to fulfill the most important goal of this podcast, hosting this award show, but we have so much more we want to do in the coming months and years to recognize deserving private school athletes in Texas. What's going on behind the scenes is really amazing and exciting, and we can't wait to show what we want to do. Wes, Ryan, and I thank you for your support, and yes, I'll make the shameless plug. Please take a moment to like and subscribe and share. Share us on social media, Twitter, IG, etc. You can't imagine how much this helps us. It gives real attention to private school sports and athletes, which is what our mission is all about. So guys, thank you again so much for the support on this podcast. It means the world to us. Um, It's just a great feeling knowing that we're doing something special and we're so excited for the future. So now, on to the show. Hello and welcome back to a very special episode of the Texas Private School Podcast, the first annual awards show presented by Family Toyota. I am here joined by my good friends Walker Lott and Ryan Schroeder, and we're actually going to kick the show off by announcing the all private school teams. You know, a ton of effort went into this. And Walker, I want to go to you now so you can kind of reiterate, like we said in the last episode, the criteria that we considered when choosing all these guys. So I don't want there to be any gray area of why we picked some guys over others guys 
So, of course. Um, so the first thing we looked at was stats because, you know, like how they do it in the NFL, pros, college, all that. How good it was your season. You know, if you put up the stats, that's why most of the times you deserved it. You know, uh, like I made the thing last time, you know, Devontae Smith won because he was on Alabama, yes, but he also had the best season and was one of the best receivers of all time. So that's a little comparison. But Zach Wilson from BYU had a great season. Maybe didn't have the record like everyone else, but did have a great season. That's why he was not a finalist, but at least a contender. So that's what we really look for. Stats number one. Kid, did you ball out this season? Did you deserve it in that way? We also look for, you know, uh, if you win, you know. Having a guy who maybe had great, good stats but brought his team to 10-0 and and won a state championship, that's really significant because that means you led your team all the way there and helped that team win. So that's a big thing for a lot of people. Uh, plus, you know, having those stats is also really significant. Um, we looked at the all-district and all-state lists as well, making sure, you know, they're recon- recognized by coaches as well, making sure they, you know, they respect them as well as we do. But, you know, that's maybe on the lower of the totem pole of things we looked at because, you know, there's a lot of politics that go along with that as well. Um, but all those things, we looked at awards. We looked at, like, what's how significant they were to their team. Like, wh- like if you're a most valuable player, if you take your that person out of that team, what does that team look like without them? And I think that's another big thing for a lot of these awards. Um, how significant are they to their team? So that's really what we looked at. Um, but... Stats wise, uh, we found Max Preps, Dallas Morning News, Houston Chronicle, uh, the San Antonio newspaper, stuff like that to look into that to do it whatever we can to find these guys' stats. I DM'd a lot of people trying to make sure I got their stats correctly, so I did that as well. Um, so you know, we just found a lot of different ways. And if like if you didn't get nominated just because I couldn't find your stats, and it was I very much checked and made sure we we really scavenged the ends of the earth to find these guys. So yeah, that's really it. Uh, but I feel like in the end, we all made the right decisions on uh, these guys. So, yes, I definitely agree we spent a lot of time, you know, kind of deliberating and trying to figure out who's going to fit best for these, these all, uh, all team lists and individual awards. And I'd go as far to say is trying to figure out these awards are considerably more difficult than doing the NFL or college because finding the stats on these guys are a lot less streamlined than it is uh, in something like an organization like the NCAA or the NFL, because we have to go to a bunch of different newspapers and stuff that's not very centralized and it ends up being very difficult. But without further ado, I will actually jump into the all private school first team offense. And we start off by looking at quarterback Preston Stone from Dallas Parish Episcopal. We see running back Amiko Amegwe from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Next, we have running back Brad Evans from Midland Christian. Following him, we see wide receiver Cameron Bonner from Houston St. Thomas. Next, we have wide receiver Jay Moore from Dallas Parish Episcopal. Following that, we have wide receiver Dylan Bell from Houston Kincaid. At the tight end position, we see Drake Martinez from Houston St. Thomas. For our offensive linemen, we see Tommy Brockemeyer from Fort Worth All Saints. Austin Uke from Dallas Parish Episcopal. Donovan Jackson from Bel Air Episcopal. Remington Strickland from Fort Bend Christian. James Brockemeyer from Fort Worth All Saints. For all purpose, we see Christian Benson from Dallas Parish Episcopal. And at kicker, we see Riley Reithman from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Now flipping to the other side of the ball, we look at the first team, all private school defensive team. Started off by defensive lineman, we see Jaden Jones from Dallas Parish Episcopal. Jadan Burnett from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Next, we see Jaden Scarlett from Flower Mound Coram Deo. And rounding out the defensive lineman, we see Curly Thomas from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Up next with linebackers, we see Jake Peterson from the John Cooper School, Vincent Page from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic, Keegan Addison from Dallas Parish Episcopal, Colton Wolf from Midland Christian, Terrence Brooks from John Paul II in Plano. I started with our defensive backs. Next, we see Keontae Williams from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Cameron Selman from Trinity Christian Cedar Hill. 
and rounding up the DBs, we see Tyson Flowers from Walker's home, Fort Worth Southwest Christian. And at the punter position from my alma mater, Grace Community, we see Alex Quintero. And on to now the second team offense of all private school. At quarterback, we have Max Cobb from Houston St. Thomas. Uh, running back, we have Grant Robinson from Plano John Paul. Uh, the other running back is Monte Dawson from Fort Worth All Saints. Uh, the other, the starting the wide receivers, we have Jordan Williams from Cedar Hill Trinity Christian, Jacob Trimble from Fort Worth Christian, and then Irene Nagambanziza from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. At tight end, we have Logan Tanner from Houston St. Pius. Uh, starting the O line, we have Tyler Possaringen from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic, Max Merrill from Houston Strake Jesuit, Ryan Lingell from Dallas Jesuit. Luis Chariva from Bel Air Episcopal, and then Colin Montgomery from also Bel Air Episcopal. Uh, the all-purpose athlete is TJ King from Dallas Christian, and also the kicker is Will Stone from Austin Regents. Uh, for the second team defense, we have Eno Etta from Covenant Christian. We have Bryce Gaines from uh, Houston Second Baptist. Jaden Jones from Dallas Christian. We also have Cameron Robertson from Plano John Paul. Uh, and the linebackers, we have Eric Franco from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Uh, Mayon Hicks from Pantigo. Uh, we have Vincent Ori from Houston St. Thomas. And we also have Isaiah Torrio from San Antonio Antonian College Prep. Uh, DBs, we have uh, Christian Driver from Argyle Liberty. Braxton Myers from Plano John Paul. Kenneth Borders from P Dallas Parish Episcopal, and we also have Robert Fitzgerald from Dallas Jesuit. And rounded off punter, we have Aiden O'Connell from San Antonio Central Catholic. Now into the all-private school, honorable mention offense. At quarterback, we have Drew Dickey from Austin Regents. At running backs, we have Sean Coleman from Dallas Christian. The other running back, we have Corey Harris from Fort Worth Southwest Christian, also known as Walker's Home. At wide receiver, we have Josh Franklin from Austin Regents. At the wide receiver, we have Daniel Calabrese from Covenant Christian. The other wide receiver, we have Josh Little from Dallas First Baptist. Now at tight end, we have Brett Judd from Dallas Christian. Starting at O-line, we have Clayton Coyer from my home, Frisco Legacy. At O-line, we have Elijah Bowser from Trinity Christian Cedar Hill. We have Matt Craycraft from Dallas Jesuit. We have Cayman Duncan from Houston Kankaid. And we have Caden Kittler from Plano John Paul II. For the all-purpose position, we have Hayden Whites from Lake Country Christian School. And at kicker, we have Pablo Tager from Houston St. Thomas. Now for the all-private school honorable mention defense. At defensive line, we have Pete Mel from Dallas Jesuit. We have Caleb James from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. We have Jeremiah Bodwin from Dallas Parish Episcopal. And we have Jake Morrison from Austin Regents. For the linebackers, we have Mark Simons from Fort Worth Southwest Christian. We have Weston Benson from Austin Regents. We have Carson Hintz from Houston St. Pius. And we have Gabriel Grubbs from Dallas Christian. At the DBs, we have Manny Harris from San Antonio Cornerstone. We have TJ King from Dallas Christian. We have Cameron McCurry from Houston St. Thomas. And we have Parker Robinson from Dallas Christian. At the punter position, we have Riley Reithman from Fort Worth Northern Catholic. And that's going to round out your entire all-private school honorable mention team. That obviously finishes our lists for all private school teams. Obviously, a ton of talent is condensed to those three teams. And if any of those kids don't have homes or aren't committed yet and you're looking at them, I, I guarantee you there, there are people on that list that can make your program a lot better than it already is. But we are now going to move into individual awards. We're going to start with the SPC slash other private school category and then work our way up from TAPS D4 all the way up to Division One. So starting with SPC and other private schools, this is, you know, kind of a group of schools that we didn't have a large sample size on due to factors that they couldn't control. But we figured that we had enough information to make um, these awards and decisions based on that. So I'll start with the SPC, other private schools, coach of the year which is, and the nominees for that are. And 
the winner is Nathan Lerned from Houston Kincaid. Uh, Coach Lerned went 7-0 and and 3-0 and in district with a 27-14 to win over Bel Air Episcopal, notching him this award for those accomplishments. Now we move on to Offensive Player of the Year, and the, the nominees for this award are... Offensive player of the year goes to Jaquan West from Houston, the village in three games at quarterback. He went 20 for 39 with 342 yards and four touchdowns plus 42 attempts, 717 yards and 13 touchdowns with a long of 98. He's going to be an absolute stud at Houston, the village. Now we move on to defensive player of the year for SPC and the nominees for that award are. Jake Peterson from the John Cooper School. In six games at linebacker, he had 70 tackles, four sacks, eight tackles for loss, a forced fumble, and one interception, which happened to be a pick six. On offense, he had 45 rush attempts for 440 yards, eight touchdowns while going five and one. And finally, for our last award for the SPC and other private schools, we move on to most valuable player. And the nominees for this award are MVP of the SPC goes to Dylan Bell from Houston Kincaid. He was the main star for Houston Kincaid this year and has been rolling in offers after this season. And he's going to be the top receiver in private school next year and was arguably the top receiver this year. So we're very excited to see big things from Dylan Bell in the coming year. But Walker, I'll hand it off to you for TAPS Division 4. Yeah, absolutely. So moving into the uh, Tabs Division 4, we'll start with Coach of the Year, and here are the nominees. So the winner is Jake Waxmith from Shiner St. Paul. He led his team this year to a 9-2 record with a state championship win over Waco Bishop Riker. And now he wins his seventh title as a coach, tying the record in private school. Big deal over there. Legend now in the making. Absolutely. And now let's move on to Offensive Player of the Year. And now here are the nominees.
winner is Joshua Little from Dallas First Baptist. The wide receiver had 66 receptions, 1,111 yards receiving, and 10 touchdowns. He helped them have a semifinal appearance. It is now committed to ECU. Stud, I've been saying it for a long time. The kid backed it up this season. You know, Dallas First Baptist was lucky to have him this season for sure. Uh, moving on to Defensive Player of the Year, let's start off with the nominees. And the winner is Isaac White from Brian Brazos Christian. You know, he had 114 tackles on the season with 71 of those being solo. He had 11 tackles for loss and also an interception with nine games played. Uh, they were lucky to have him over there at Brazos Christian, and he was a key part of that defense for sure. Um, and now moving to the big award, we'll move into Division Four MVP, and here are the nominees. <laughs> Eli Cummings from Waco Bishop Riker. The running back transfer came in and just dominated Division 4. With nine games played, he had 135 carries, 1,400 yards rushing with 17 touchdowns. And also to add on top of that, he had 22 receptions for 307 yards, four touchdowns, and he also had two punt returns for touchdowns, and also two kick returns for touchdowns. Dude went off this year. And not only that, he went on defense and had 80 tackles, three sacks, Two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, one interception, and also one defensive touchdown. The kid went off this year in Division Four and was one of the main reasons why Bishop Riker went all the way to state this year. Props to him. Had a great season. Uh, I'm excited to go see him at University of Idaho next year. And now into TAPS Division Three awards. And obviously we're going to start at Coach of the Year. And the Coach of the Year nominees are... Coach of the year goes to Phil Toe from Covenant Christian. Um, Coach Toe won state for Covenant and brought them for their first title since 2017 um, with a team that was basically on the brink of not even happening. Uh, he was, you know, persevered and took them all the way. I think it's just a great, uh, a great year for Coach Toe, and I think he showed why this Covenant Christian deserves the the love that they, you know, that they get. Um, um, what a great coach and what a great season for Coach Toe. Now for the Special Teams Player of the Year, here are the nominees. Special Teams Player of the Year award goes to Adam Atwell from Bay Area Christian. Adam had a 40.6 yard average on his punts, being 34 for 34 from PAT, and then went 2 of 4 on field goals with a long of 38 plus 9 touchbacks as well. This kid is a stud, and he also plays QB for Bay Area as well. What an overall good player, and what a great special teams athlete for this Bay Area Christian team. Now on to the Newcomer of the Year. Here are the nominees.
Newcomer of the Year award goes to Jordan Battles from San Antonio Holy Cross. His senior year, he had 2,280 total yards with 833 being passing with eight touchdowns and 1,447 of those being rushing touch, rushing yards with 20 touchdowns. He played defense for them as well and brought them to a semifinal appearance and really showed why he is the leader for the San Antonio Holy Cross team. Now to the Offensive Alignment Player of the Year Award. Here are the nominees. Offensive Alignment of the Year Award goes to Kirk Revis from San Antonio Holy Cross. Kirk Revis was a staple for this O-line that led them all the way for Jordan Battles and that Holy Cross offense. He has offers and was a first-team All-State Offensive Lineman and surely deserves this Offensive Lineman of the Year Award. And for the Defensive Lineman of the Year Award, here are the nominees. <music> Defensive Lineman of the Year Award goes to my guy, J.D. Doddard uh, from Lake Country Christian. Uh, with 69 tackles, with 34 of those being solo and 15 tackles for loss and eight sacks, he's already getting offers after only playing football for one year and was a key piece for the Eagles this year. He's a stud, he's a big boy, and he's definitely a man that deserved Defensive Lineman of the Year. For Offensive Player of the Year Award, here are the nominees. Offensive Player of the Year award goes to Alex Slack from Lubbock Christian. On the year, he had 2,658 total yards with 1,836 of those being passing, 22 passing touchdowns, 812 rushing yards, and 13 rushing touchdowns. An absolute stud up there in Lubbock and brought them to a second round appearance this year. The man runs a 4.540 with a 33-inch vertical and a, a 355 squat. Absolute stud, and I'm excited to see where he goes if he chooses to play college ball. Now on to the Defensive Player of the Year Award. Here are the nominees. for the Defensive Player of the Year award goes to Inno Etta from Covenant Christian. The man had 67 tackles with 43 of those being solo. He had 16 tackles for loss while also leading all of taps and sacks with 17. One of the most dominant guys in Division 3 and it's going to be special to see how this guy excels for the next couple of years. Now for the Division 3 MVP. Here are the nominees. <laughs>
the Division Three MVP, the award goes to Hayden Whites from Lake Country Christian. He had 36 touchdowns on the year, 26 of those being rushing, nine of those being receiving, and one of those being a kickoff return touchdown. The man is a stud. He had 193 carries with 1,895 of those being uh, yards rushing and 15 receptions with 451 yards receiving, plus seven defensive e uh, interceptions. He helped them go 10-2 and two this year with their only losses coming to Coveted Christian, a.k.a. the state champs. He did everything for them, and they are for sure going to miss him this upcoming year. Now we go over to West with the Taps Division 2. Thank you, Ryan. Now we move into Taps Division 2, where we start with Coach of the Year, and the nominees for Coach of the Year are... the TAPS D2 Coach of the Year is Tim Phillips from Austin Regents. You know, coming into his first year as a head coach at Regents, taking over the job from an amazing coach, he ended up winning state. You know, he went 10-0 and and outscored his opponents 451 to 104. And, you know, even with that great record, he went against all odds when everyone thought D.C. was going to win, and he pulled that massive upset in the championship game. You know, with him at the helm at Regents, it's going to be a very, very exciting future for them down in Austin. And now we move into Special Teams Player of the Year, and the nominees for this award are... the TAPS D2 Special Teams Player of the Year Award is Alejandro Quintero from Tyler Grace Community. You know, he's a five-star Coles Camp kicker, and he was second-team All-State and kicker and was a first-team All-State punter. You know, this holds some personal weight for me as he was my former teammate. And, you know, this year he never came off the field, and you will not find a harder worker throughout TAPS. He just committed to blend to further his athletic and academic career, and I'm very, very excited to see him rise up to Power 5 soon. Concluding that, we move on to Newcomer of the Year in TAPS Division Two, and the nominees for this award are... the TAPS Division II Newcomer of the Year is Sean Coleman Jr. from Dallas Christian. He was a first-team All-State running back and was the main part of that Dallas Christian offense that brought them so far. Regarding his stats, he had 114 carries for almost 1,300 yards and 19 touchdowns, and all of us got to see him in person and realize how good he was, and he was a driving force of this Dallas Christian offense this past year. We now look at Offensive Lineman of the Year in TAPS Division II, and the nominees for this award are... winner of the TAPS Division II Offensive Lineman of the Year is Remington Strickland from Fort Bend Christian. 
you know, he's an absolute monster. And we brought up his name several times before this on the podcast. He was first team All-State offensive line and second team defensive line and is the first guy that I've known of in a while that's going to play Division One ball at the FBS level. And not only that, is playing in the SEC at Texas A&M. You know, he blew up this past season in terms of recruiting as one of the top linemen in all of Texas. So definitely deserving of this award. We now move on to Defensive Lineman of the Year for TAPS Division II, and the nominees for this award are... Taps Defensive Lineman of the Year for Division II is Bryce Gaines from Houston Second Baptist. The Villanova signee had a great year as one of the top defensive linemen in all of Houston. He was a district MVP and an All-State player three straight years for Houston Second Baptist. So, you know, he had a legacy of greatness at Houston Second Baptist and definitely glad to see him receive some recognition on this end. We now transferred Offensive Player of the Year for TAPS Division II, and the nominees for this award are... the TAPS Division II Offensive Player of the Year is Cade Barone from the Geneva School of Bernie. The Geneva quarterback was unreal this season with 3,000 passing yards, 31 passing touchdowns, as well as 685 rushing yards with 11 rushing touchdowns. He dominated this year. And do not forget about the wide receiver Jackson Young, who caught 1,200 of those 3,000 passing yards. Those two were a elite duo in TAPS, and Geneva is going to miss this guy for sure next year. So big congratulations to Cade Barone. We now look at Defensive Player of the Year for TAPS Division II, and the nominees for this award are... of the TAPS Division II Defensive Player of the Year is Jaden Scarlett from Flower Mound Coram Deo. The SEC offer defensive lineman is coveted by many colleges already, and he dominated this past year and has the stats to show it. He had 62 tackles, 42 of them being solo, six and a half sacks, 25 tackles for loss, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, and averaging about 10 tackles a game. The dominance he showed this past year is why the 6'2 kid is getting attention after only his second season playing football and obviously well-deserving of this award. And finally, we round out with the big one, the Division II MVP. And the nominees for the Division II MVP are... the TAPS Division II Most Valuable Player is Drew Dickey from Austin Regents. D2 
Dickey was dominant all season long and was a big reason why they went 10-0 and and outscored their opponents 451-104. to He scored in the state championship game and helped beat a very talented Dallas Christian team. And Walker mentioned earlier, we value winning above everything in this award show. And that winning of state really propelled Drew Dickey to capture the Division II MVP. But that rounds out our awards for Division II. Moving on to Taps Division One's the big, big one of them all. You know, we'll start with Coach of the Year, and here are the nominees. Daniel Novikov from Parish Episcopal. Coach Novikov has led his Parish team to back-to-back state championships, beating two great teams. Taking over the job not too long ago, and he has led Parish on the up and up. And it's going to be exciting to see what happens next year for the Panthers for sure with Preston Stone gone. And now let's move on to Special Teams Player of the Year, and here are the nominees. For Special Teams Player of the Year, the winner is Riley Reithman from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. Riley was dominant all year and was a five-star kicker for a reason. You know, first-team All-State kicker and a second-team All-State punter. You know, as D1 offers, and exciting to see where he's going to end up for sure. Watching him in the state championship, I mean, he went out there and went got back-to-back onside kicks, and they both were recovered, showing why well, he was one of the best, now the best, special teams player in Division One. Uh, moving on, we'll go to Newcomer of the Year, and here are the nominees. For Newcomer of the Year, the winner is Logan Tanner from Houston St. Pius. Logan Tanner is all you want in a tight end, man. With 980 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns on this season, he was a monster and every defense had to make sure they had to guard him. Uh, he already is all first, of course, but we're excited to see, see him grow and be one of the top tight ends in the state of Texas in the 22 class. And now, moving on to Offensive Lineman of the Year. Austin UK from Dallas Parish Episcopal. You know, there's a lot, a lot of talented linemen in Division One, but Austin UK, the recent Stanford signee, had a monster year for Parish and allowed Preston Stone to beat Preston So this year by protecting his blind side. Um, UK has blown up this season with almost everyone uh, late trying to get him to sign to their college. But ultimately, he will end up at Stanford, which will have a knack for loving private school O linemen, including Walker Little, hopefully a future first round pick for sure. And moving on, we'll move into Defensive Lineman of the Year, and here are the nominees.
Jaden Jones from Dallas Parish Episcopal. Transferring from Pantigo for his senior year, uh, Jaden Jones made a significant impact over there at Parish this year. 83 tackles for 31 solo, plus 18.5 tackles for loss and 8 sacks. The SMU signee it was a nightmare for all offensive linemen all year, and I know all those O-linemen are for sure going to be happy that they're, he is gone for the next year. And now, moving on to Offensive Player of the Year, here are the nominees. Christian Benson from also Dallas Parish Episcopal. I mean, Christian Benson was a key part for the offense. And just by stats, he had 515 yards passing and four touchdowns. So made it a nightmare for everyone. But on top of that, he also had 1,031 yards receiving with 10 touchdowns added on to that as well. The future Dartmouth player was a monster all season. And in the end, the state championship, he was the man that sealed the deal for Parish. He ran it for 40 yards and won him the game. Um, great player, exciting to see him at Dartmouth next year. Uh, moving on to Defensive Player of the Year, here are the nominees. For Defensive Player of the Year, we have Jadam Burrett, Fort Worth Nolan Catholic. The Fort Worth Catholic defensive end was a star for the Vikings this year. 55 tackles with 31 of those being solo. He had 21 tackles for loss and 12 and a half sacks as well. The Louisiana Tech signee will leave a great legacy over there at Nolan with be- being one of the many defensive linemen to go play elite college ball at- from Nolan. Um, overall great person great guy and tremendous athlete and was one of the reasons that defensive line for Nolan was so so deadly for a lot of teams this year Uh, moving on to the big award we have division one MVP and here are the nominees For Division One MVP, we have Preston Stone from Dallas Parish Episcopal. Who else could it be, man, with the back-to-back state champ over there at Parish Episcopal? With over 3,400 passing yards and 38 touchdowns, and then you add on to that 500 yards rushing and 10 more touchdowns, so there wasn't a team that really could stop Stone all season. The SMU Sonny was a big name in high school, and can, can you can argue that he's a top-five quarterback in the state of Texas this year. The biggest name in private school will be a big-time guy for the Mustangs next year, and everyone in private school are for sure going to be excited to watch him play at the next level. Uh, moving on, so now we have the big four. The big four, we'll start with Coach of the Year for large and small, and now and then we'll move into Player of the Year. Um, these All these guys who win it and the nominees were great players and deserved every single bit of it. Um, they had great seasons. The coaches had great seasons leading their teams, and the players just had dominant seasons. They should be proud of themselves. The nominees should be proud of themselves. Everyone who got a, uh, nominated won these awards, they should be proud of themselves. I'm excited to give these guys these awards because of all the hard work that came into it. Um, so this is going to be a really fun time. So starting off with small school coach of the year, here are the nominees. <laughs>
And the winner is, for small school coach of the year, Jake Walksmith from Shiner St. Paul Catholic School. You know, going 9-2 and two and beating Waco Bishop Riker in the state championship, he had a dominant season with their, over there in Shiner. You know, having seven titles in over his coaching career, unreal. Tying, I believe, Coach McClendon's record over there at Midland Christian, being one of the best in private school history. Um, shout out to him. Overcoming a great Bishop Riker team in the state championship was the reason we brought him here and made him win the state uh, small school coach of the year. And now, on to large school coach of the year. A uh, big category, a lot of big names in here. Um, and here are the nominees. And the large school coach of the year is Tim Phillips from Regent School of Austin. Um, dominant season. You know, we talked about it earlier. Went 10-0. and He outscored his opponents 451-104. to um, And beating a Dallas Christian, te- Dallas Christian team in the state championship that, honestly, no one, no one on this podcast saw coming. Um, taking over from a job who was a legendary coach in Beck Bryden and then coming over and being as dominant as he was. I mean, just speaks to the work ethic and the coaching ability of him and uh, that team, that coaching staff as well. Um, they they have a really great coach down there in Region School of Austin. And, you know, they're going to be really really happy that they have him for the next couple of years. Um, they should all be proud of him down there. Uh, moving into small school player of the year, big category for a lot of big names, but here are the nominees. <laughs> And the winner is of Small School Player of the Year, we have Hayden White from Lake Country Christian. I mean, we talked about it earlier, 193 carries for 1,800 yards rushing and 15 receptions for 451 yards and 7 defensive interceptions. He had 36 total touchdowns with a kickoff return for a touchdown as well. I mean... That's what you talk b- player of the year. You can get it done on one side of the ball and also the other. I mean, seven defensive interceptions. That probably is one of the top in, this, in all of TAPS, in all of SBC, all of private school. Um, dominant player. is dominant not just one year. This is what it's for this year, but also all the span of all the years. I mean, they went 10-2 and two also. So they played a lot of games, and he dominated every single game he played in. Um he should be proud. His team should be proud. And I know for a guy like that playing in Division Three, um, they're gonna miss him. That talented, that talented of a guy in Division Three. It's a sad day because we're not gonna watch that good of a talent in Division Three. But we're, I'm excited to see where he's gonna end up this year, um, where he's gonna sign and all of that. So best of luck to him for the next season. And now we have the last award of the night. We have Large School Player of the Year. A lot of great names on this. A lot of great names on this. But only there can be one. So here are the nominees. Now, for the winner of the Large School Player of the Year, we have Drew Dickey from Regent School of Austin. Drew had a great year. Um, he went 10-0, 451-104 to record, outscoring his opponents by that much, and then scored in the state championship against Dallas Christian, 
now is now offered by a Big Ten school. He's going to be blowing up and is going to be the pro- the sorry the top quarterback in the class of 2022 in private school. Absolute stud. Dominated every single bit. And I, re- I remember seeing him play, and he just has a moxie for the game. He loves the game. He wanted it, They were up by like 30, and he still wanted to run the ball right out the middle and just run a QB read. That's just the type of player he is. He's a dog. He's a monster. And everyone in Taps is going to be very scared to have him having to play him and again for one more year over there at Regents. Um, can't speak highly of this kid. He's a great player, great guy. And, you know, Regents School of Austin is lucky to have him down there for sure. And with him at the helm, it's going to be exciting to see if they can go back there next year. And I honestly feel like they can. Drew had a fantastic year. He deserves it. Um, his team over there at Austin Regents helped him win this award for sure. Um, they should be all proud of him. And I'm excited to see him next year dominate Taps as well. So, For sure. And first of all, I want to I want to give it up. And look how sharp my co-hosts look. I got on this call and I was kind of feeling myself. And I immediately got shown up by the other two guys. But no, on the more serious things, you know, making this list was an incredibly difficult and long task for all of us. And when I say we left no stone unturned when looking for stats and criteria on these guys, we really didn't. And big shout out to Walker. Walker took on the brunt of the load for all this. I know he's had a lot of long, sleepless nights trying to get all this together. But again, thank you to you. And thank you for everyone that we've reached out to and contributed your stats. You know, big shout out to obviously Dallas Morning News, Houston Chronicle and all that from where we pulled stats from and big congratulations to everyone on this list you know I really hope y'all can take something away from this and you know there hasn't been anything like this in taps or having an outside organization being able to give awards that we feel are as unbiased as possible and is unmarred by politics and things that are usually you know kind of corrupt in taps but you know I'll I'll give y'all a chance to have some parting shots Ryan I'll turn to you first is there anything you want to say before you get out of here I just want to say congratulations to everyone on this list. Like we just said, I think it is so great for us to have the ability um, to do something like this for all these kids. I think as we are private school kids, we were private school kids. We played private school sports when we were in high school and you have to be able to trust us in the fact that we know what it's like to not have all of, you know, the eyes looking on you and that you want more recognition for what you're doing. It, we, we experienced it. We're just like all of y'all that are on this list. And that's why we do this show for y'all. Um, I want to say big thanks to family Toyota. Um, without them, there literally is no way that we can, you know, do this award show. Um, we literally um, thank them so much. What a, what a great uh, group of people that uh, decided to um, reach what well, we reached out and, you know, just a great group of people that we got to sponsor this podcast. So please go, if you're in the, um, in the, you know, area of wanting to buy a new car, please go check out um, what's called family Toyota in Arlington and Burleson. They are definitely the, the family type people that we love and the family type people that we would want that we chose to have on our award show. So for sure, Walker, I'll kick it to you. Any parting shots you want to leave the audience with? Absolutely. I mean, I just want to say thank you because it's it's been a long ride to get everything for this show to make sure this is correct and we got the right people for the right awards. Um, I mean, I I've been I've been a madman trying to get all this stuff together so we can make the right decisions. I mean, getting photos for this stuff, getting stats. I know I've been in a lot of people's just DMs asking, "Hey, can I have your stats? Hey, can you give me a photo?" Um, I've been very like persistent about this, and you know, um. I just wanted to make sure this was right because I feel like everyone who's on this list, all the nominees, all the coaches, all of them deserve this and deserve this award, deserve this award show to be the best it can be. And that's why it's a well, high quality, well done um, production. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone I've reached out to, everyone that's going to watch this, everyone who's going to promote it. Please promote this. Get this out here because I want we want to grow this. We wanted this to be a big thing. And once this becomes a big thing, we have a lot of other stuff in the works. Um, this was just the tip of the iceberg of how much we could do that's something special. Um, we have a lot of things in the works. I've talked to a lot of coaches. We've, we have things in the works that are going to be very, very special for the future. Um, yeah, with this being the end of the football season, really, we're still going to be talking football. Football is the biggest thing in Texas. You're going to have to talk about football. But, you know, we're going to have basketball for sure with Ryan next weeks after this. And then also maybe some baseball. Get some other people on for baseball for sure. We talked about that long ago, but I really want to do it as well. Um, 
yeah, I just want to say thank you, man. It's been a big opportunity for all of us. I mean, a lot of great people along the way. Um, I'm really excited to do that spring tour as well, going out to meet all of you. And the awards that y'all are going to get, a lot of y'all are going to love them, you know, going to put it on your dorm rooms next year. I think it's going to be really, really cool and not something that you're just going to put in a box and throw away and all that. Um, very excited for these. Um, hopefully, I can, I'll can i deliver them to you hand in, in person, hopefully. Um, if not, I'll ship it to you and I'll reach out to you, get your details and stuff like that for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for this. I'm very happy this is finally here. Um, please promote this, share this, get it out there. And also, of course, I just want to say thank you to the family Toyota again. They're great people, man. They've been great to me and my family over the years. Um, they're really, really good people. Um, then just go out there, go reach out to them. Um, they're going to be good people and they're going to work with you really, really well over there. Um, so yeah, great people excited for the future of this. I hope everyone enjoyed it and yeah, back to you, Wes, man. For sure. Yet again, we want to thank everyone that stuck around this long and has watched the entire episode. Uh, please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you haven't already, that is a great way for us to grow our audience. Make sure you like the episode as well. If you have any criticism or thoughts of your own, please leave a comment down below. Everything like that helps us grow our audience. But without further ado, if there's nothing more to be said, I am Wes Tallis, and I'm one third of your hosting crew, Walker Lott and Ryan Schroeder have been themselves. We will see you in the next episode. Peace.